All right, and welcome back to Good Vibes. I'm Martin Falls, joined always by the lovely Debbie Cox Nanova. And Debbie, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Our transformation coach. Yes. So we had some good topics lately. Mm -hmm. Making cool friends after graduation. After graduation, super important. It's a great topic. Yeah, yeah. This comes so up a lot you do that? in coaching. Okay, so we already know that it's easier. It seems e easier for children to make friends than it does for adults. And actually, research shows that it actually is. And that's because of two things. First of all, uh, sociologist Re uh, Rebecca G. Adams talks about how there are two components to the infrastructure of the way the children's lives go in school that benefit them in making friends. So there's this this regular unplanned interaction that happens and then shared vulnerability. So after graduation, we do have work work situations, but oftentimes our work doesn't allow us to be vulnerable. And actually there's studies that show that as an adult, the more time you spend working with people that you're not vulnerable with, the lonelier you actually feel. So this is about creating new friendships. I have a lot of people who talk to me about how they feel dissatisfied as an adult with the friends that they have, where they don't have enough friends, they find themselves drifting away from friends and they just feel like they're lonely on an island. We've talked a lot about the loneliness epidemic and mm -hmm. how dangerous that is to our health. It's actually dangerous, more dangerous than sedentary living, smoking a pack of cigarettes a day and unhealthy eating because we're designed to connect to each other. And there are different levels of ways that we're designed to connect. Mm -hmm. So you at home might actually have a loving relationship with your spouse and still find yourself lonely if you don't have friends because there is the loneliness that, com that comes in three dimensions. There is the intimacy, um, loneliness, which is about that shared romantic relationship. There's relational, which is about friends. And then there's communal, wanting to be a part of a group that is doing something uh, on a mission. And so you're being a part of something that's bigger than yourself. Let and me ask you this. Uh, when people say they've outgrown their friends. Is that what they're talking about? They, it can be. Uh, a lot of times, and we, what happens through life is we all kind of take our different paths, and so we grow as people. And so sometimes the compatibility is lost. Um, sometimes we realize and recognize that the friends that we have maybe are not actually serving us. We speak a lot about this, um, you know, in my coaching sessions about what a quality friend actually brings to the table. You want someone, when they did research, they found that a lot of people assume that being entertaining is the highest value that someone is looking for in a friend. It's actually the lowest. What's the highest is feeling valuable to another person. So if you're surrounded by a group of friends and you don't feel valuable, to them, or maybe you feel actually like they're frenemies, like there's there's a covert thing happening, you can feel the gossip or whatnot, it can actually leave you feeling lonelier um, at the end of the day because you don't have anyone that is actually seeing you and valuing you for who you are. Uh, there's a psychologist, Harry Stack Styles, who talks about the theory of chums. And the theory of chums is really that our framework for relationships in terms of friendships comes from our very original group as friends. So we've talked about attachment styles, right? As an adult, if you're looking for new friends, what you're wanting to do is look for super friends. And really what super friends are, are, are securely attached friends. Securely attached people, they're very secure in who they are. So they're less likely to be using people as a tool to gain that significance of self and also to escape the threat of, um, of feeling, feelings and emotions that they don't like. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that in terms of friendship, securely attached people are those who put in a high amount of effort and get a high amount of value back versus, I don't know if you remember the attachment styles, but avoidance, for example, have had bad experiences as children and being vulnerable. And because mm -hmm. they've had bad experiences, now they see people as a threat, right? There's that mm -hmm. paradox of people. There's that part of you that wants to go in closer, but also there is, it is threatening. To, people can be threatening. They can actually harm us in many different kinds of ways. And so avoidance actually put in low effort and get low uh, low uh, rewards and anxiously attach people, those who have been harmed before, like where they're, they're not having their needs met, tend to be those who put in high effort and get low reward back. So they're chasing mm -hmm. and going, you need to prove to me that we're, that you like me, that you love me, that, and they're, they're sort of adjusting it so that they have control in the, in the situation so that they can actually feel like you they're valuable. You shouldn't really have to prove. 
They right, do. exactly. But these are you should have, come by action. Yes, and yeah. so these are what we're talking about is wounding, really. Mm -hmm. But remember from the attachment styles conversation that you're not doomed to your attachment style. So mm -hmm. you can have an earned, secure attachment style where you feel secure in who you are as a person, and so you you fully humanize someone else. And what we want to be seeking out is people who are securely attached as adults, because if not, then when we go to be vulnerable, for example, with an avoidant, and that avoidant is has a value based on his or her own experience that being vulnerable can get you harmed, they may not reciprocate or they may actually have negative feedback to your vulnerability. And it's important for you to understand that if that's the case, it's not your fault. It doesn't mean don't be vulnerable going forward. It means seek out people that you can be vulnerable with mm -hmm. safely, right? And so we want to make sure that as we're approaching friendships, uh, that we're doing that and also that we're assuming that we're likable. There's this, this thing called the likability gap where people tend to assume that they're less likable than they actually are. They tend to assume that they're not going to be valued for who they are when it's all, in all likelihood they actually are being liked much more than they think. And so it becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Because mm -hmm. when researchers told people, hey, listen, falsely, they told them you have um, you you rank on this personality test in a way that when you go into this group, you're likely to make a lot of friends. What they found is people came in more open, more, um, you know, extroverted, and they ended up making more friends versus those who who didn't actually were more standoffish, more closed off and tended not. To, and it was a self-fulfilling prophecy as well. They tended not to make friends. So you could either self-elevate or self-destruct. That's it. It's all in your beliefs. So believe you're likable and that people will actually love you. You can if you think you can. Yes. Yeah. All right. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. More with Debbie Cox to Nova. Don't go away. Structural heart disease refers to a defect in the heart's valves, walls, or chambers that keeps the heart from pumping blood properly. Valve or structural heart problems may be present at birth or develop over time. Your risk increases if you have high blood pressure, plaque buildup, history of heart attack, take certain medications, or have certain heart infections. The Structural Heart Program at CIS and Terrebonne General provides innovative solutions and devices with the latest technology to bring the best possible outcomes for patients. Learn more at cardio.com. At Waits and Downer Law Firm, we want to make sure that you have all the facts when dealing with your insurance company. We have the legal experience and ability to make them pay. Get the help you need. At Waits and Downer, it's our goal to not only get you a full damage recovery, but to get the insurance company to reimburse your legal fees. Call today for a free consultation. We are local and we are here to stay. Let our years of experience work for you. Terrebonne General Health System is the largest healthcare resource in Southeast Louisiana, offering a high-tech and high-touch style of healing. World-renowned services include cardiology, women's health, cancer care, and a healthy lifestyle center. This is a true calling for all the physicians, nurses, and staff who make up our proud Terrebonne General family. We are here to provide healthcare for our community. To discover more, please visit tghealthsystem.com. Selecting an insurance provider for your business is a big decision. With over 26 years of experience, our offer team is your solution for quality and proven coverage. The customer service you remember from years ago is what we pride our team on. We know how important your company is to the community. From small businesses to large businesses, Alford & Associates can manage your insurance. It's our job. Alford & Associates, benefiting your employees and protecting your business. All right, we're back. We continue our talk about making friends, cool friends after graduation. Good Vibe Show with Debbie Cox Denova. And Debbie, we were talking about 
that so many times you drift away from your childhood friends. Mm -hmm. My case too, you drift away from them, but you never lose that connection. Yes. You can see them. You haven't really talked or spent quality time in five years, but when you see them, boom, 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 it's connection doesn't take long to come back. Yes. And this goes back to assuming the best because some people have it like friendships are fragile versus flexible. When you do, do consider a relationship or a friendship that hasn't been nurtured in quite a time, asleep versus dead, you're actually much more likely to be able to revive those friendships and bring them back in, in, in a close and intimate way immediately versus someone who assumes, well, I haven't heard from this person in a long time, so I guess we're not friends anymore. Mm -hmm. So we're, it's all talking, going back to talking about assuming the best of people, remembering that there's this risk regulation theory. So people are going to invest it, it only as much as they believe they're not going to be rejected, right? Remembering that that highest value is feeling valuable to other people. We talked about that high school study where the most popular person was the one who liked the most people. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it lowers the risk. There's a great risk. Remember that, that people paradox. There's a great risk in opening up and being vulnerable to people because if you do that to the wrong person, you really mm -hmm. can actually get hurt. So if you're the type of person who creates value or actually conveys that the other person has value to you, gives affirmation, um, intimacy, that sort of thing, then studies show that over time, you actually you take great effort to do that. Mm -hmm. You actually end up with the, with the greatest network of friends. So we want to recreate, if we can, as adults, the infrastructure that we had as children. If you are not already in a situation where you have unplanned regular exposure to people, find a club, a group where you can actually go on a regular basis and see people because you will be taking advantage of what's called the mere exposure effect. And the mere exposure effect says that just by virtue of seeing someone on a regular basis, we tend to like them more. Even when we don't know them, if we see their face, this is how our brain is, is wired, mm -hmm. right? If we don't know them, just seeing their face on a regular basis increases likability automatically. Now, so if you're in a situation where you just signed up for a club as an adult, something that you're interested in, something you can be authentically you in, and you pinpointed somebody or a couple of people who are cool that you think might actually be good friends to you, remember that the li likelihood of them liking you back just because you approach them and ask them to do something is high, higher than you're anticipating, right? Mm -hmm. You ask them to go do something separate from the group. And now what you're doing is you're creating memorability and experiences separate from the group. And then you can go back into the group experience and you're already putting in the efforts that are going to organically help you to create a friendship. That's why I always tell people in high school, I had four or five groups in high school, mm -hmm. which is not the norm. Right. Most people have a little herd, mm -hmm. and when a herd goes, they go. My friend, we call it the A team. Mm -hmm. My A friends assume that I was on the A team, but they said, "Whoa, you going with the B team today?" And I would always look at them and go, "What makes you think they're not the A team?" Right. <laughs> you know. So, and I encourage people in high school move around different groups, mm -hmm. see different things and take in somebody who may be less fortunate, who may be not as outgoing, mm -hmm. bring them in, adopt them in your group, and let them grow with you. Yeah. And when you graduate, there's so many rewards to that, and you've made somebody's life. Absolutely, and and making every single group that you're in feel like the A-team really is what we're talking about when it comes mm -hmm. to building intimacy and bonding. If, if, if your friends, when they're with you, feel safe and seen and heard and felt mm -hmm. by you and valuable to you, then you're creating the kind of intimacy that actually helps to offset that feeling of loneliness that so many people are experiencing now. If you're somebody who's at home a lot and you're actually just on the social media, there's that doom scrolling that people talk about that makes you feel lonelier. Mm -hmm. But research has shown that if you can actually engage with people in the same way that you would in real life, so let's just say that for whatever reason you have to be home, that if you engage with them, actually tell them how much you love, you know, seeing pictures of their kids, comment on that, and actually connect, you actually will increase your experience of 
connectivity and intimacy and your loneliness will actually go down. Mm -hmm. You also want to pick if you're looking for fr new friends, transitioners are always the best. They're more open to like new to new friendships. Mm -hmm. Transitioners are people who are going from one thing to the next. So maybe they're starting a new job or a new school. Uh, maybe they just retired. Uh, maybe they just moved to the new, a new city. They're always more open to new friendships versus those who have kind of in their, in their own little groove. They've got so much energy to invest and they already have their friend groove. So look for the transitioners, assume the best about them, ask them to do something separate from the interaction that you have already, and then nurture those friendships, remembering that if you want a securely attached friendship, it's high investment, high effort, high reward, and creating a safe space for them as well, being someone who sees them as valuable and keeps their trust and all of that will actually create a increase the chances of reciprocity in that. Because if you think about it, when somebody's running for office, if they just go visit the local YMCA, mm -hmm. they're not going to win. Right. They have to go to all these different groups. Yes. And I always tell young teenagers when I'm talking to them or, or I'm invited to a school to say something, I said, these people you're hanging out with today, I said, don't be alarmed. Right. Maybe one out of ten will be your friend for life. The other ones will go away, but make friends with everybody and you, you'll have more friends. Absolutely. Like look for the good in people, assume mm -hmm. the good in people, even when they're not behaving properly, recognizing that that theory of chums, that our personality really is mm -hmm. in large part a coping mechanism for our original connections or lack thereof. They just need attention. They need attention and we can all become secure to Give attached. them attention, put them back on the railroad track and help them out. Earned security. Absolutely. Great topic. Yeah. Can't wait for next week. Mm -hmm. Any hints? No, I don't even know. All right, I'll wait. All right. <laughs> All right, it's good vibes. We'll see you again next time around.